Did you ever think that you know phone pay will become so successful and will be such a ubiquitous service as it is today when you started out? No, to be honest. But uh, given the population of India and the fact that the people are hungry for services that make their life easy, it sort of makes sense that we did. And for, you know, the global audience which is listening in and, you know, to this conversation, can you describe what PhonePay does for, you sure. know, ordinary consumers, citizens for in, in India? So PhonePay is a fintech only app. We are anchored on payments. So wherever it is that you make a payment, you should think of PhonePay. So we started off with a very simple premise, which is send, meaning I can send money to you, you can send money to me in a secure fashion. And unlike the traditional wallet format, your, the money that I send you directly hits your bank account. That's where the UPI part of the payment interface comes in. Mm -hmm. And then you grow from there. So phone pay's thing was very simple. First, we will bring you onto the platform and allow you to send money. Then the next was to spend money. Spend money meaning take care of all your bills. Again, you will see the, that everything ties into core payments, right? So we, at the end of the day, we are a payment company. So the spend aspect is any bill you can think of, whether it's your electricity bill, your gas bill, your cable bill, your water bill, all of those are tied into and allowed on the phone platform. We even have conveniences where it reminds you when your bills are due and with one click you can pay them. So that's the spend portion of it. Then manage is to manage your money actually. And then grow. Grow is so now we have moved into wealth management. So you will see mutual funds, life insurance. So that's the whole life cycle. So send, spend, manage and grow. And how big is the user base today for phone pay in India? On a daily total processing volume, which is the amount of money that flows over the phone pay network, we are touching close to $2 billion a day, sometimes even going higher to 2.7 to 3 billion. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. It keeps me up at night. Indeed. We are a fully a Mesosphere shop, so we run Docker containers on Mesosphere. Today, I believe we have over a thousand Mesosphere slaves with almost uh, 40,000 to 60,000 cores running our core payments infrastructure. Our relational database of choice obviously is MySQL, but it's broken up into individual clusters and sharded ad infinitum. I think our last count the numbers keep changing, Rohit, so don't hold me to it. But sure. at the last count, they were close to 700 plus MySQL bare metals in the organization. And then for our key value store, very high frequency key value store, we use Aerospike as a distributor. But even with this many MySQL nodes, what we realized was that when you're trying to service a billion people, and people keep correcting me now, it's 1.7 billion people. I guess I really need to look up my census data. But uh, the challenge set is different, right? And our MySQL databases were filling up very, very rapidly. And we needed to have a system where we could offload this data, which is still critical, just not in the critical path of the transaction at that time into a more archival storage mode where it could still be accessed. And that's what we were doing with our HBase clusters, right? So we we take the data off of our high-speed NVMEs, put it on our HBase clusters. And at the same time, we also move them into our data warehouse for post-processing of the transactions and our OLAP queries. And as such, our infrastructure on the Hadoop ecosystem grew around in 2019, I think we had around 100 to 150 nodes, right? I think a year after the demonetization happened, then we just started taking off. 
so when you combine those two things right you you're not just growing your distributed service stack you're growing your software stack you're growing your engineers that are working on it you are adding more hardware to an existing distributed system so look at the change that you are looking at right people are changing software is changing hardware is changing what does these three things changing in a hyper growth environment mean it means complete and utter chaos right and we were having severe p1 issues and i think that's what led to me looking out and saying there has to be a better way to look at from soup to nuts from hardware all the way to the job schedule job scheduler to the data lakes that are bringing the data in and look at that whole thing holistically rank in order of you know priorities for us yeah. you know uh, reliability SLAs and SLOs and uh, you know engineering productivity but uh, if i were to choose something it would have to be reliability right because when you are serving 100 million users and 30 million merchants their livelihood is depending on you the pressure is extremely high for you to perform at that level so obviously i would say reliability is number one for us i'm very clear about my end goal is right i want to wherever there is a payment to be made it has to be anchored on phone pay such it was fairly easy for me to say this is not where my core strength lies nor where i should uh, where i should be using my engineering resources when i have 30 other problems on the board from the board that they want solved right so that was fairly easy the second one was that looking out in the market i was seeing piecemeal approaches the traditional companies that had monitoring solutions had put together a module for hadoop and it you know it had the pretty pictures and showed the cpus and the memory and how yarn is doing at a particular time but there was no depth to it right so when a common vc introduced us look and realizing that you guys were a new company that started from scratch defining a solution that was solely geared towards solving hdp related issues from soup to nuts whether it's from the hardware all the way up the stack to the data lakes and the mechanisms to look at the quality of the jobs and the timing of the jobs right i don't even today i may be mistaken but i don't think there is anybody that is doing it in that spectrum yeah i mean absolutely i mean there's nobody which is providing you this multidimensional view into your data system which covers your compute systems data reliability and your pipelines all put together so that definitely continues to be the case and one of the unique differentiators that we have you guys have done an amazing job at phone pay